A couple of reminders before we get started. We are going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand and someone around with a microphone will come around. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you are joining on Zoom, please raise the hand function for questions. We will address the questions in room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Greg McDermott. Coach. <coughs> First of all, uh, congratulations uh, to Coach Gross, his, his staff, uh, and his team uh, on a phenomenal year. Uh, I, I gained a new appreciation uh, for the job he does um, in our preparation for Akron. Um, that team was, was very connected uh, defensively, very unselfish on the offensive end. Um, and as I mentioned uh, a couple days ago, they lost several close games that were really not far from winning 30 games this year. So th they had uh, uh, our utmost respect. And I think you saw, uh, you know, especially in the first half, um, you know, it's a quality, quality team uh, that we beat today. So, uh, you know, we're excited because we beat a good basketball team. And proud of our guys. Uh, you know, I thought we took really good shots. And when we take really good shots, it, uh, you know, we're a pretty good basketball team. And uh, we've got to clean up some things uh, with some of the turnovers. but. Uh, you know, defensively, I thought we adjusted as the game went on and uh, did a much better job in the second half. Okay, representing Creighton's student athletes, Mason Miller, Ryan Cockbrenner, and Baylor Shireman. Questions for student athletes? <coughs> right down here up front. Matt Satilli, KUTV Omaha. Baylor, what flipped in those last couple minutes before halftime? You guys go on the run and don't look back from there. What, what changed? Um, I think we were able to get a, um, some stops in a row, and then on the offensive end, um, get shots and, and like coach said, you know, we really struggled with turnovers in the first half um, and, and those last four minutes we really, you know, took care of the ball and we're able to get shots and stops and, and we're able to do that um, That's when we're able to really um, gain some separation Right second row Matty Reyes white and blue review I guess for Ryan and Mason Pace felt like Akron even though they were hitting shots were playing at your guys's preferred pace Did you feel like as the first half wore on and especially as the second half got going that that started to wear into them? Uh, yeah, that's kind of how we approach a lot of games is, you know, even at the beginning of the games, our pace may not necessarily get us a lot of buckets early on because the uh, team's fresh, but like we play at that pace, practice at that pace all the time. So we can keep that up for 40 minutes. Uh, not every team we play against can. So, you know, when you start wearing into them like that, you start to get a few easy baskets or a few b good looks because uh, you're running the other team. So I think that definitely helped us toward the end of the first half and then the second half. Uh, right middle there. John Walker, Omaha World Herald. Ryan, what, what changed defensively for you in the second half in, in the job that you did on Enrique Freeman? Um, I think just a little bit of getting used to how he plays. You know, you can watch someone on film a lot and get as used to it as you can. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, he's a really good player. And, you know, just made some mental adjustments as to how I wanted to guard him in the post and did a little bit better job. He still got a few buckets because he's a really good player. but. Uh, yeah, just, just being able to make adjustments in the game. Front right. <clears throat> Matt Satelli, KETV Omaha. Mason, when did you know that something was going right for you, and, and what kind of an impact when you're hitting your shots like that can that make on your team and on your teammates? Uh, honestly, I mean, just every single day. I mean, I, I work on my shot every single day, so I mean, I kind of coming into the game expect uh, to make shots like that, but. I mean, I guess just running to the corner, getting open looks, and uh, playing within the offense kind of helps uh, helps the team a lot, especially when we have uh, great players like Ryan and Baylor over here. Uh, being able to space the floor for them is it's huge for them. Zach Jackson. Uh, Zach Jackson, the Athletic. For any of you guys, just the experience you guys have at this stage. How did that help today, and how can that help you the rest of the tournament? Well, I just think, you know, the game's 40 minutes long and, and, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs that go throughout a basketball game. And obviously in the first half, you know, um, there was some things that didn't go right for us and they were kind of, you know, hanging with us and, and whatnot. But then, you know, we were able to get stops and just, it's a game of runs and we were able to go on ours and then continue it. Um, so I think that experience of knowing that the game's 40 minutes and that, um, you know, it's, it, it <coughs> can happen. I think that, you know, helps us out. 
Any more for the student athletes? All right, last one right here, front and right. Matt Satilli, KETV Omaha. Baylor, is there, regardless of opponent, always a challenge that comes with the first game of the tournament, just getting the kinks out of the way and finding your rhythm? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, obviously, um, it's a, you know, the tournament is so, um, you know, fun and, and not everybody gets to take part of it. And, um, you know, the start of the game, um, you know, the atmosphere, um, it's just a little different than, than a regular game. And um, regardless of who you play the first round, a lot of times, you know, it can be really tough. I mean, last year, NC State, it was a tough game. This year, same thing. So regardless of your opponent, the first game is always, you know, a challenge. All right, thank you. So now this can be dismissed. Once again, please raise your hand. Coaches for Coach McDermott, right here to the right. Maddie Marius, White and Blue Review. I don't know what you're saying to them in the huddle as that first half's going on, but obviously both teams were making a lot of shots. Did you, did you get a sense that because of the way the pace was going and that Akron wasn't really trying to slow down and play to their style yeah. that you guys were going to eventually break through? Some of the things I said in the huddle I can't repeat to you. That doesn't happen with me very often. Uh, but, you know, I, I was not surprised that they came at us in transition. Um, and watching them play, they, you know, they're opportunistic. But, they, you know, they have a lot of guys that can handle it in transition and, and lead the break. Um, <clears throat> so I, I wasn't, was not surprised they came at us the way that they did. Uh, you know, we had some mental mistakes that allowed them to kind of get going. And, and uh, you know, Freeman Banks in his first three. Um, you know, that's a that's a nervy shot for a guy that doesn't shoot a lot. You know, Kalkbrenner makes one too, but um, you know, if he the first one doesn't go in with a bank, maybe he's not as comfortable. You know, the most he's ever shot in a game this year was three and shot 47 on the year. So, you know, we really didn't think coming in that he would be willing to shoot eight three-point shots. Um, so we had to adjust, obviously, as the game went on. <clears throat> Questions for Coach? Right here uh, to the left aisle. Kevin Gorman, Pittsburgh Trib. Uh, Greg, how much did you kind of bank on that when it started to turn into kind of a one-on-one -on -one there with Kalkbrenner and, and Freeman that the rest of your guys, with the supporting cast, would start to get open looks the way that they did? Yeah, especially when Freeman picked up a few fouls. You know, that takes away a little bit of his aggressiveness, and that's just naturally going to happen when you're in some foul trouble. So um, as we got that lead, we really made it a point. Uh, to make sure we played through Kalkbrenner. And I, I thought the guys did a job, good job of picking their spots. And, uh, you know, and, and like I said in the open, I, I, you know, the 17 three point shots, we had a couple we had to take in late shot clock situation, but I think they were really good threes for us against a team that's been a lead all season of taking away threes and, and making sure the percentage, I think the team shot 30% against uh, Akron from, on the season from three. So, to do what we did offensively against what I consider a very good defensive team is really a credit to our team. Front right. Matt Satilli, KETV Omaha. Coach, this is the fourth year in a row that you guys have won a tournament game, and you've now passed all other Creighton coaches combined for most wins in the NCAA tournament. To have four years in a row where you can get a win in March and to have the success that you've had, what kind of a, a what does that say about this team that they can perform at this time of year? Well, I mean, first of all, it's you never take for granted getting here because it's really difficult. Uh, you know, what is it, 16 or 17 percent of the teams, uh, Division One teams, get in the tournament? That's not very many. Uh, and there's a lot of disappointment on Selection Sunday with teams across the country that felt they were deserving and they didn't get in. So the first thing you do is you appreciate the opportunity, uh, and then you celebrate the things that you've done to get here. Um, like I told the guys in the locker room before the game, we talk about process all year long. You know, trusting the process, trusting your work. Um, you know, that process is what led us to here. And that process is what's going to give us hopefully an opportunity to kind of finish the job and keep advancing in this tournament. But, um, you know, I've had, you know, really only one of those teams was an inexperienced team. Um, the team when, you know, uh, three years ago um, when, when Nemhart got hurt and Trey had to slide to the, uh, to the point guard position. We were playing some freshmen, uh, you know, Alex O'Connell only transferred in for one year. Ryan Hawkins for one year. Uh, the rest of the the rest of the teams we've had some pretty good experience in the tournament, and I think that really helps you uh, when you come back. You know what to expect. Uh, teams that are here the first time are taking pictures and doing all that when they go on the court. Our guys today was like, all right, you know, this is where we expected to be. Uh, you know, what are we going to do? And and let's do it and get out of here. So. 
Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to play in the tournament, and you know, we, we hope we're, we're blessed to be able to stick around to Saturday, and, and uh, we'll try to give it our best. Left back. Tom Withers, Associated Press. Greg, I'm just curious what you might have said to Kalkbrenner um, when you pulled him over to the sideline on that late breakaway that didn't exactly go the right way. <laughs> well, he, he had one uh, early in the season where he had attempted to break a press by himself, uh, which was the first time that I'd ever seen that in the four years that I've coached him. Um, today was a, was a first as well. So we were chuckling about, uh, he said he thought about going in behind his back at the end. That's what brought my chuckle. Uh, but, you know, he plays the game the right way. He plays with emotion. He, you can tell he loves to play the game, um, impacts the game in so many ways that don't show up in this stat sheet. So that, that was a fun moment for both of us. All right, last two here, right and then left middle. Matty Marinas, White and Blue Review. Mac, when you, as the game wore on it, it did feel like, I know it's by design defensively, and I know you gave up some offensive rebounds, but you did force them to take the shots that you <coughs> design your defense to force teams to take. How did that execution ramp up as the game went on? Yeah, I mean, we had to make some adjustments when the bigs were hitting threes. So we had to switch a little bit more, and then we got cross-matched a few times. Um, but I thought early in the second half, I thought, uh, I can't remember uh, who hit him. I think Johnson hit a couple tough twos uh, where we went over the screen. We were there. He hits a 16, 17-footer with a hand in his face. That's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, so I, I was happy really after the – uh, you know, the first seven or eight minutes of the game, I thought we settled in a little bit better defensively. Uh, but, you know, credit to them, they also made some, some tough shots. All right, last question right here. Kevin Gorman, Pittsburgh Trib again. Um, I know you were locked into your game, but I'm wondering how much you were aware of what was going on in Omaha with Duquesne, mm -hmm. which is the host school here, and, uh, you know, beating BYU and the crowd's reaction to that and at times during your game and whether the same thing was happening back home. It was a little strange to play the game with that going on, by the way, because the, the cheers and the oohs and ahs didn't really match up to what was going on on the floor in front of us. So that was somewhat uh, challenging for our guys. But uh, I, had, I had saw in the locker room before I left that they had the lead, and then obviously what, saw the reaction. Uh, Keith, Keith's been a friend of mine a long time. We coached against each other back when I was at – Northern Iowa and Crate was in the Valley and he was at Akron. Uh, so we, we've known each other a long time. Uh, you know, what a great way, uh, you know, for him to go out as, as his career is winding down. Um, but he's, he's always been a terrific coach. He's tremendously respected in our profession. And, you know, good things happen to good people sometimes. And, uh, you know, he deserved that. So I'm really, I'm really happy for him, uh, you know, and his program and, and especially his family with some of the things they're going through. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Congratulations.
Once again, a couple of reminders before we get started. We are going to start with the opening statement from the head coach, followed by with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand and someone with a microphone will come around. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use your raise hand function for questions. We will address the questions in the room first and go through Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with the opening statement from head coach John Gross. Coach. Uh, obviously didn't go, quite go the way that we had planned or wanted, to, wanted it to. Give Creighton a lot of credit. I thought they were really challenging to guard. I felt that way coming into the game. I thought it was important that we had valuable possessions on offense and scored. And uh, I thought we got some pretty good shots. And we made them early. Uh, didn't make as many of them in the second half, but I, I thought they were good ones. And the game got away from us just a little bit there. But, you know, give them credit. Uh, they're a good basketball team. But I'm really proud of these guys, uh, proud of our whole team, but in particular our senior class and uh, what they've meant to our program uh, in some cases five years, four years, two years, and one year uh, between the five guys and uh, what they've you know what they've done for our program and it's not just the winning you know obviously that's the part that you get to see is the three championships over five years and the win percentage and all that uh, that these guys have been able to attain. But it's bigger than that to me. It's uh, the people that they are, the people that they've become, the leaders that they've been, uh, the way they are on campus, uh, the way they treat people, um, the teammates that they've been, their work capacity, their commitment to being great, um, their commitment to each other, how much they care about each other, and how much they care about winning. And in a day and age where you know, our society can tend to be the opposite of that or 180 of that or, you know, um, where there's selfishness and all that with teams. And, you know, the fact that we didn't have any of that um, makes this group really, really, really special. Um, it's been a real privilege to coach them uh, and to work with them. Like I said, Caleb one year, Sammy two years, Ali four, and Reek and Greg five. Just very, very thankful and feel very blessed. Uh, wish we'd played a little bit better today, but you know, right now I'm just kind of have an attitude of gratitude for these three guys and Thornton and, and Hunter who aren't up here. Representing the Akron student athletes, Enrique Freeman, Ali Ali, and Greg Tribble. Questions for student athletes? Right here and right. Alex Henry, WZIP, Enrique, you went from getting dragged to open tryouts and now in March Madness I don't know if anybody's told you I'm sure you know though most double doubles uh third in NCAA uh, division one history kind of how does that feel to kind of finish this part of your story uh if I mean obviously the accolades feel nice but like coach said I just in real good gratitude um with how this team you know th throughout the entire season throughout my entire time here you know we we worked very hard and um i think we did something very special in akron and i'm i'm glad we were able to you know put on for the city questions for student athletes right here logan logan conger of wzip akron ali what does it mean for you to kind of finish off your story coming back to akron you get back to march madness and finish it out with your guys Obviously, not the way you wanted the game to end, but your story as a whole, talk about the ending for you. Um, obviously, not the en ideal ending that we wanted, but I, I got to go out with the people that I care about the most, you know, outside of my f like family back home, honestly. Like, these are, these are like my brothers. I don't really got too many friends back home. Like, these are the guys I'm around with a lot. So if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose with them. If I'm going to win, I'm going to win with them. And, you know, that was a big part of coming back and knowing that, I would regret it looking down if I didn't finish off my college career with these these guys next to me and in the locker room. Uh, Zach Jackson, the Athletic. For any of you guys, you know what worked in the first half. What what did you think would work? You know, with, with your game plan. Um, could you just speak about you know the the, the hot start you guys had. Uh, I feel like we were making a lot of shots in the first half, which uh, led to they can't get out in transition as much if you're making shots. And then I feel like in the second half, we wasn't making as many shots. We started gambling, and then they just, they're a really good team on offense. And once you, once they start getting open shots, it's hard to stop them from making shots. So uh, they were just real good in transition, and 
we just didn't have good transition defense tonight. <clears throat> right here. Uh, Michael Bevan with the Akron Beacon Journal. Uh, Enrique, just that first half, they end on an 8-0 run. It extends to 28-8, to I believe. Mm -hmm. Kalkbrenner, Alexander, Shireman, they're all involved. Just how difficult matchup were those guys, and for you in particular, Kalkbrenner? Uh, I mean, he's, you know, he's a big player. Um, he has good size, but I think matchup-wise, I think we did a good job throughout the entire game, you know, trying to take away their good tendencies. But overall, I think they just kind of killed us in transition. And, you know, they hit some – they're really good at the three-point line, so they hit some good threes. Right here on the aisle. No. Yep. Kevin Gorman, Pittsburgh Trib. Uh, Enrique, can you talk about what that – the, the banging inside and drawing him defensively outside, defensively drawing him outside with the threes. What was that pace like for you? And did it take a toll as the game went on? Just the, the kind of the frenetic first six minutes? Uh, I mean, um, I don't think it took a toll. I just think I got in foul trouble and then we decided to put Sammy on him. But, you know, we, we just, that's what bigs do. We just get to go down there and, you know, we're physical, try to get, uh, catch him outside the post. I know he could, um, I know he. Uh, I had a good post position, and you know he struggled to when I was, you know, using my moves. So it's just, it's just basketball. Right here up front. Nate Allrick of the Akron Beacon Journal. From talking to you guys, I know that you thought mental toughness really carried you through the MAC tournament and here, mm -hmm. but you didn't play your best. I'm sure you guys think that you know today wasn't your best. So what do you think kind of just prevented it from being, you know? Of you know reaching your your full uh, potential as a as a group when when it comes to the talent and experience you guys have. Um, I think I think um, potential wise, I think our team is reaching our potential. You know, I think you know our entire season it was ebbs and flows throughout the entire season. But you know, in this game, some games you get outshooted. Simply it. I don't think any of our guys quit. Any of, none of our guys didn't stop playing hard. Everybody gave their best efforts until the shot clock went off. So, you know, all we can do is take a look at the draw the board and hopefully those freshmen, juniors, and sophomores, you know, come in next season and see that and use that as an opportunity to learn. Terry. Little Cleveland Plain Dealer. Enrique, you came out and banked in a three pointer to begin, and I think you took like eight of them. I don't know, maybe, maybe John didn't design it that way, but. What, what, what was going on there with you shooting the threes, and just how did you feel about that? Uh, you know, they, they have – he plays in the paint a lot, so we try to stretch out the floor a little bit more. And, you know, everybody believes in my three. I've been working very hard on it. And uh, I just knocked down a few, so, you know, they had to change coverage, and we decided to attack a different way. Back right. Nathan Bracinger from Pittsburgh Sports Now. This game only came about two hours away from home. Um, pretty good faithful showing from the Akron crowd and at times in the first half pretty energetic how did you guys you know try to ride that momentum from the crowd as well and then what was it like just to see the Akron faithful here no, no, sir. Oh. It, uh, it meant a lot uh, obviously our fans they care about us they show up to every home game that's why we were so good at home this year I mean it, it just feel uh, feels good to see uh, some familiar faces in in Pittsburgh and we just tried to feed off of that and and that's it, really. <clears throat> Any more questions? All right, last one for student athletes right here. Michael Bevan with the Akron Beacon Journal. For you three guys, you guys came in before the pandemic. And I mean, you guys have been in Akron for five years, Enrique six as a student, obviously. Just if you could take us back to when you were kids to now as kind of grown men or adults, just what's that been like, this whole experience of college basketball with two tournament appearances? Enrique, you want to start and work our way down? Uh, I mean, the, like I said yesterday, the journey's been amazing. Uh, super grateful for the journey. Um, I wouldn't ask for it to go any different. I'm very proud of what I was able to accomplish here and all of us were able to accomplish here. And I just, I'm happy that we're able to leave on a legacy. You know, Akron basketball, Akron culture, you know, we, we've done a lot of winning and we, we want to just pass on the torch. Those guys in 2019, 2020 passed the torch to us. Time for us to pass the torch. Ali Ali. Uh, I would say I'm definitely appreciative of like the run we've had the last, you know, four or five years. And just looking back, like obviously as a kid, middle school or high school, like for me, not having a D1 offer senior year starting, like girls coming in and giving me one chance. You know, no one else gave me a chance coming out of high school. So I think just 
like coming into this tournament has kind of been the story of our lives, always been underdogs. So, I mean, I'm just grateful and appreciative for all the people I've met on the way. Greg? Oh, yeah, I'm just thankful for the opportunity of Coach Gross and the coaching staff for even believing in me to, to come to this university. Um, um, just teaching the younger guys that just don't take it for granted, you know. Um, obviously, we put in a lot of work to get to where we at now to do, the, do as much winning as we have and just teaching them. That's what it's all about, just teaching them that you just can't take it for granted. You got to work hard every day. <clears throat> Thank you, student athletes. All right, questions for Coach Gross. Back right, Iowa. Uh, Zach Jackson, The Athletic. Coach, did the first half kind of go according to plan, or was there a, a big deviation from what you thought? Uh, until the last couple minutes, I thought that was the biggest juncture in the game. Uh, we were up 34-31 with about two minutes to go in the half, and then they went on an 8 nothing run. I thought that was the biggest two minutes of the game. Um, so give them credit. Um, I thought they, you know, we, we had a couple possessions there where we didn't get matched up in transition. The guys alluded to that. You know, we had a questionable shot. You know, couldn't quite get the ball a couple times where we wanted to get it. But for the most part, other than those two minutes, we played – the game plan to precision, quite frankly. You know, we really did. You Run know, right. Terry was talking oh, about sorry, Freeman's eight threes. I actually was hoping he'd get 15 up. Sorry, Coach. Front right. Logan. Logan Congrove, WZIP Akron. Coach, you started off the game with Enrique Freeman up top, taking those eight threes throughout the game. Mm -hmm. so you had Sammy Hunter in the post. Was that something you guys had planned for? You know, it's kind yeah. of a switch from the rest of the season. Yeah, and a lot of it's based on how Colt Brenner plays defensively. In my opinion, he makes them go defensively. So the guys certainly are smart, give good effort. But you're talking about the three-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year, you know. And he's big, as Reek said. And so... You know, I, I've got confidence in Enrique and Sammy to shoot the ball uh, from the three-point line and beyond. And so that was part of it, um, trying to get him out of the pain a little bit, give them credit. He, he made, Greg made a change like co good coaches like him do and changed his coverage a little bit. But, you know, I thought Ali was effective in the first half. I thought the pick-and-roll game was effective in the first half. You know, I thought we did a lot of really good things. And until their run, the last two minutes, um, as the original question was – asked there. I don't know if it could have went, you know, much better. Uh, second juncture of the game that I thought where it got away from us was the start of the second half. You know, it did you know, we just weren't, you know, didn't didn't quite weren't quite as effective as we were the first eighteen minutes. And then we were playing behind from there. Back left. Tom Withers Associated Press. John, given Enrique's journey, um, how tough is it then subbing him out with one twenty three to go, knowing you're not gonna have him again? tough it's not just because as good a player as he is that's part of it but it's the person he is the leader the teammate the you know how coachable he is his work ethic how much he cares about other people you know I've nicknamed him the unicorn for a reason I did it right here Drew Von Sayo, College Basketball Review. Coach, in that second half, when the offense isn't executing, it seems like shots are finding any and every way to not fall. What's the message to your team? Well, just my, my whole deal, and it is every game, it's the quality of the shot that's important to me. Uh, I believe in them that they can make good shots. So I'm more concerned about the quality of the shot we're getting. I thought turnovers would be big for us. And you can look at the stat. We only turned it five times the entire game, which is great. Um, I thought defensive rebounding would be an advantage for us. They got they got us a little bit on the glass there during that one stretch that I was a little disappointed in. We missed a block out on Mason Miller and a couple guys there that ended up during that stretch of two or three minutes when I talked about the bad start a little bit to the second half where it kind of got, got away from us a little bit. Like, you know, I thought that offensive rebounding by them was a part of that. But... You know, yeah, I mean, obviously you want to make shots, right? Who doesn't want to make shots? We've taken a lot of pride in having a lot of mental toughness and being able to play through stretches. 
you know, we had a semifinal game in Cleveland where we scored 16 points in the first half and had 13 turnovers. We're only down 10 because our defense was so good. Then we scored 50 in the second half and shot the cover off the ball. So, you know, you, you want to make shots. I mean, I, I do think if you can rebound and take care of the ball and defend, you're always going to have a chance. Um, but this was a little unique today. Their offense, as the guys were alluding to, is just prolific. Saw it on film coming into the game. Felt that way during the game. My opinion hasn't changed on that. Just have a lot of answers offensively. They've got size at the rim and a guy that can score in the post. They've got a, multiple playmakers, great passers, you know, um, and they shoot the ball from three very well. You're not going to find very many nights where you've got all four or five of those guys that shoot threes for them to all be off in the same night. You know, they're just, they're just, and then they run good stuff. And so it's, it's, uh, it was, I knew it was going to be a challenge to stop them. Again, I thought the key would be could we keep scoring? And obviously we were able to do that for about 18 minutes, but weren't quite able to sustain that for the remaining 22 minutes. To the left here. Coach, uh, Michael Bevan with the Akron Beacon Journal. Again, you used the word prolific to describe their offense. Was there an offense this season, whether it be regular season or MAC tournament or non-conference, that prepared you for what they bring with Kalkbrenner and Alexander and Shire No. Bradley? No. No, I mean, I, I think there's, there's good offensive team in terms of their personnel, their blend of size, shooting, playmaking, um, what they run offensively. Uh, they're as good an offensive team as we've went against in my seven years at Akron. Uh, John, uh, Terry Polito from the Point Dealer. Um, you've been in a situation before after you know being eliminated in the NCAA tournament. I'm just curious, what do you say to your team afterwards in the locker room? Well, I just told them how proud I was of them. You know, I addressed the game briefly. Um, obviously, it didn't go the way that we wanted it to or envisioned or planned for it to. Give Creighton credit. Uh, but just told them how grateful I was for what I just said at the outset of this five years, four years, two years, one year, in particular those seniors, and really all of them. You know, I enjoy being with them, coaching them. Uh, they are a great group of guys, as Freeman has said multiple times. We don't have a bad apple in our locker room. It's, you know, that doesn't mean we don't go through, you know, times that are tough. We all do, right? You guys do, we do. But, you know, it's the people you do it with, how much you care about each other. We have good people in there, and it made it super enjoyable. And I'm just grateful to have had the opportunity to coach them. Those guys will always be a part of not only the Akron family, but my personal family. You know, I, I, I love them. You know, they're great, great, great guys. Only got time for a couple more right here. Nate Ulrich, Akron Beacon Journal. Hey, John, um, Enrique said he was happy to be able to leave, leave a legacy. How would you define the legacy? Well, I mean, a lot. Uh, that's a complicated question, right? Because what you see is the winning, you know, the winning percentage overall, league play, the most best in the league, the championships, the, you know, the banners, all that. And that's certainly a part of it. But I, I think it's more of, and a couple of the young guys just spoke after the older guys had a chance to speak in the locker room about how grateful they were that guys were taught them what work, hard work looked like, you know, what leadership looked like what being a great teammate looked like, what being at a do-both place, meaning we expect you to get it done academically and earn your degree and make progress towards degree while also playing at a high level, what that looks like. You know, all these guys you saw up here, plus Hunter and Thornton, exemplified that on a daily basis. And so they, they were able to see all that and feel all that. And so to me, it's, it's bigger than all the winning. That's certainly a part of it. But again, it's who they are as people, who they are as students, um, the fact that they can get over themselves and care about somebody other than themselves. Um, you know, just a special group. All right, last two. Right here and then right here. Right over here. Logan Conger of WZIP Akron. Obviously, you know, the loss is still fresh, but all three guys touched on passing that torch and the legacy of Akron basketball. What does the future of Akron basketball look like in your eyes? Well, we're just. You know, for us right now, obviously, I'm trying to process this one, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we want to continue to fill our locker room with people that care about each other and care about winning. That's what those guys would tell you. It's really not more, any more complicated than that. Do you care about each other, really care for each other, take care of each other? And do you care about winning ahead of personal agenda? Right? Sounds obvious. Sounds easy. It's not. You know, 
So that was their mentality. I think the younger guys saw that. And, um, you know, we want to continue to build on that. All right, last question. Hi, John, I know you'd prefer to be joining him in around the 32, but do you have any message for your old friend and rival, Keith D'Ambrot, as he postpones yeah, his Yeah, I'll do that probably a little bit later here. I obviously haven't had a chance to do that, you know. So I've been, uh, you know, occupied with what we're doing right now. Do you have any message for, for us? To, What's that? You ever, can you tell us what you might tell him or talk to him about later on? Well, usually he and I will, you know, obviously I'll te I said this earlier, we'll text and uh, or we'll call and, you know, I'm, ha I'm happy for him, obviously, and, you know, what he's been able to do. I think it's, uh, you know, you look at the last time that they were in uh, the tournament, I think was the 70s, if, if I'm, is that correct? Yeah, so it's really, it's, it's awesome, you know, what he's, what he's been able to do and, and uh, happy for him and, and, and Donna with the retirement and, you know, Keith's big reason why I ended up coming to Akron, I said that earlier, was because of Keith and all the success that he had had and the battles that we had when I was at, was at Ohio and, and uh, familiarity with Akron and Northeast Ohio because of my time in the state at uh, so many Ohio universities. And so I had great familiarity with Akron and was attracted to that, but in, in large part because of Keith. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Sure.
Oh, what you gonna do? You wanna get down? Tell me. Oh, what you gonna do? Do you wanna get down? Oh, what you gonna do? You wanna get down? Oh, what you gonna do? You wanna get down? Tell me. Satellite coordinates SES dash three forward slash fourteen K slot B nine.